having just uh, sprung some good news on me that I'm supposed to be the moderator here. I, uh, I attended the meeting last year in Rochester. Uh, there was a gentleman uh, whose name escaped me. Yeah, Dan McKinley. Dan McKinley. Yes, thank you. Who was elected as moderator in, in, in my world. Uh, whoever is the moderator is uh, the moderator until you elect somebody this time. So I got all gassed up. <laughs> Didn't know I, whether I was even coming to the meeting or not, but here I am, and uh, Carl hit me with the good news as soon as I walked through the door. So. We'll see what we can do. Uh, <laughs> there you go. See, he's bridging the community. Yeah, he's I got, merged. One, I got one point. Uh, in my world, the town clerk has always read the warning, so I don't know who reads the warning, whether I'm supposed to read the, own, the, the warning, or one of the board members is supposed to read the warning, or. Or you can all read it for yourself, so. Uh-oh. It's the moderator. 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 Thank you. <laughs> I'm, I'm learning already, and thank God I remembered my glasses. <laughs> Otherwise, somebody else would be reading. We learned you here. Rochester Stockbridge Unified School District Annual Meeting Warning. The legal voters of the... Rochester Stockbridge Unified School District, consisting of the towns of Rochester and Stockbridge, are hereby notified and warned to meet at the Stockbridge Central School right here on May 28, 2019, at 7 p.m. to consider and act the following articles, 1 through 10, to be acted upon on May 28, 2019. Article 1, to elect a moderator who shall assume office immediately and serve a one-year term or until the election and qualification of a successor. And that's, that's the way I write it. <laughs> Article 2, to elect a clerk who shall assume office immediately and serve a one-year term or until the election and qualification of a successor. Article 3, to elect a treasurer who shall assume office immediately and serve a one-year term or until the election and qualification of a success successor. Article 4, to hear and act upon the reports of the school district director and, and officers. Article 5, to authorize the district's board of directors to borrow money by the issuance of bonds or notes not in excess of anticipated revenues for the fiscal year 2019-2020 per 16 DSA 562 parenthesis 9. Article 6, shall the voters of the school district approve the school board to expend $4,480,562 and no cents, which is the amount the school board has determined to be necessary for the ensuing fiscal year. It is estimated that this proposed budget, if approved, will result in education spending of $18,427.32 per equalized pupil. This projected spending per equalized pupil is 6.84% higher than the spending for the current year. <clears throat> I didn't plan on talking this long. <laughs> Article 7, I'm not your normal moderator. I, I throw in a little uh, side <laughs> comments here and there. But That's why we love you. Wonderful. Thank you. Mature lady. <laughs> To elect directors to the Rochester Stockbridge Unified School District as follows. Rochester, one director for a three-year term. Stockbridge, one director for a three-year term. Article 8, shall the annual meeting of the Rochester Stockbridge Unified District be moved to the first Tuesday of April for all subsequent years beginning with the 2020 meeting. Article 9, to transact any other business which may legally come before this meeting. The legal voters of the Stockbridge Stockbridge Unified School District are further notified that voter, for, voter qualification and registration relative to said meeting shall be as provided in section 706 U parenthesis or title 16 and chapters 43, 51, 55 of title 17 Vermont statutes annotated. Dated this eighth day of April 
2019 in Stockbridge, Vermont, Carl Droppy Chair, Amy Wilt, Vice Chair, Ethan Bowen, Director. I didn't sign it. Are you protesting? <laughs> not, not this time. <laughs> this is a mature lady. <laughs> Jenny Austin Clark, Megan Thane, director, received for record and recording this nine day, not should be ninth, day of April 2019 by Joanne McDonald, clerk of the district. There, you there go. we go. All right. At this point, we can, can start the meeting, and I'll turn it over to my man, Carl Dropping, to find a, find a moderator here. Okay, uh, I would open uh, nominations for a moderator of uh, this annual meeting. I nominate Sir. Ken Butterfield to succeed himself. <laughs> Ken Butterfield has been nominated. Do I hear a second? Second. second. Are there any other nominations? Can I move the nomination cease? No. A motion has been made to close nominations. Is there a second? Second. A motion has been made and seconded to close nominations with only one nominee. Therefore, I instruct the clerk to cast one ballot for Kent Butterfield to be our moderator for this annual meeting. Kent, congratulations. I guess that uh, deserves a thank you, but for somebody that wasn't a declared candidate coming in the building. <laughs> Thank you. We'll see how, how we do. Article two, to elect a clerk who shall assume office immediately and serve a one year term or until the election and qualifications of a, of a I'm, I'm so tongue-tied here and I'm so excited. <laughs> of a successor. Uh, I have to apologize, uh, I guess. Uh, Joanne McDonald is the current clerk. So we'd be electing. Uh, okay. Thank you, Carl. You're my left hand man. Nominations in order for a clerk. Will she do it again? Is she? No, yes, she's no, resigned as, as, as a technology for this meeting. Oh, I see. For this meeting. One year for this meeting? Correct. So we, we need another clerk. Can I nominate Jenny Austin? Can I nominate Mrs. Feinberg? No. <laughs> you can certainly nominate. You can certainly nominate, nominate Jenny Austin if you like. <laughs> it's for this. It's for this meeting. It's for the, the annual meeting. Office meeting. Second. Can I do that? Oh, you are the clerk. I'm sorry. Sure. That's 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 a fairly good idea. Thank you, Frank. So uh, Frank has nominated Jenny Austin. Do I hear a second? Second. Any other I nominations? Would, sorry. Oh, that's right. You're the one. Sorry. Well, we're going to be closed nominations. Okay. Motion made and second to be closed nominations. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The clerk. You get, you get your fingers on the keyboard, so I yeah, assume you're, the cl well. you're, you're clerk in here. So cast one bell up, please, for Jenny. Jenny Austin. Moving right along, we should be out of here by 7.30 at this rate. <laughs> to elect a treasurer who shall assume office immediately and serve a one-year term or until the election and qualification of a successor. Uh, I, I nominate Amy Will. I don't think we can be, you cannot be treasurer and be on the board. The, board <laughs> the current, uh, Kathy, you're the current treasurer, are you not? I am. I nominate Kathy Brown. Okay. A second. Well, because of our treasury, no, she's not counting. Welcome to the meeting, Kathy Brown. <laughs> now you know how I feel. <laughs> Are there any other nominations? Just coming in the door. Do you have a nomination? <laughs> Any other nominations? Anybody can. Any other nominations? Thank you. Second. Motion made and seconded. We close nominations. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Mm -hmm. I would uh, have the clerk cast one ballot for Kathy Brown. Kathy, Kathy Brown, Brown as treasurer. treasurer. Thank you. Worth uh, mentioning again. Uh, our two
Um, are fairly close, I mean, we're 12 miles apart. We're fairly close to each other. We're fairly close in size. Um, it's always about a 60-40 split, split. Rochester has uh, 67 or 66 percent of the population. Stockers is 34. Rochester has 60 percent of our total grand list. Stockers is 40. Um, Ro um, Stock Stockers is 36 percent of the students, 41 percent of the school expenditures, and Rochester has 64 percent of the, the students and 59 percent of the school expenditures. So it is not completely a 50-50 split. Um, the big thing we've been uh, looking at this year and working on has been a, has been a couple spe uh, special projects. Uh, we put out for bid um, a, a request for, for firms to come and do a, a facilities assessment and analyze our buildings, the systems in our buildings, the infrastructure, the doors, the windows, the insulation, the utilization. Um, we got eight, I think, different bids. We got eight, eight bids uh, from companies uh, uh, around Vermont. We ended up uh, 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 unsealing the bid, bids and choosing uh, Black River Design in February. Um, the facilities assessment is underway. They expect that we're going to have a final report uh, at the beginning of June. Um, the information they've given us now, I'll go into in a minute. We've done a space assessment. I'll talk about that. The other project that we uh, have been working on and really uh, nailing down is understanding uh, the status of the school here, uh, Stockton Central School, as uh, uh, confirming that it is the town's emergency shelter, the town's warming station is the fire is the, is the fire station, and we have uh, put out for bid a, uh, a generator uh, for this facility. We uh, lost an extra day uh, to power loss to, to, and had to close for a snow day because we couldn't power the school. We had to close the school early uh, when uh, the trees went down in Royalton or uh, in uh, Sharon rather and the whole area got blacked out in the afternoon we had to close school early. So we are going to get a, a, a generator done. Both of these projects are not in the budget that's in your hands. Both of these projects the board intends to fund from uh, reserve funds, uh, restricted funds we've, we've already set aside for things like this, um, as well as uh, uh, grants. Part of the, uh, the facilities assessment already is being uh, underwritten by a grant, uh, a grant from um, Efficiency Vermont, and uh, we also anticipate Lindy has been looking into grants because we're, we're an emergency shelter to help uh, support the cost of the generator. Those two projects will be about $90,000. As I said, we're uh, uh, not funding them uh, uh, from the budget. It's funding from, from money we've already got set aside for, for issues like that. I wanted to talk some about the space analysis of uh, where we are. So what Black River Design has done is they've uh, gone through and they've looked at looked at and mapped out and, and blueprinted all the buildings. They've looked at how the spaces are used in each building, and then they've looked at the Department of Education, the Agency of Education, space recommendations, uh, as well as the average amount of uh, space used for these things in, in schools of, of our size around Vermont. And they have found that the Stockbridge building is, uh, it's not really a need for that, but I like the word deficit. Um, right now, special education and guidance uh, 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 interventions happen in the hallway. There's no guidance office or health office uh, in this building. This room that you're sitting in is the cafeteria. It is also the gymnasium. It is also the music room. And it is also the art room. And in general, in, uh, the agency of, uh, of education recommendation that multi-purpose spaces are used for two purposes, uh, not four. Um, so their recommendation is that this building should have about a 2100 uh, square foot expansion. And they suggest either putting it behind this wall behind us or off next to the library uh, coming out into, into the parking lot. As far as Rochester goes, they looked at both the buildings there. And if we look at the elementary school, um, they see that, I mean, they see that uh, the music and art space that the elementary school uses now is over in the high school. They see a need for uh, additional uh, office space and, and, and uh, additional storage, and they, they really see a need to reconfigure the uh, entry of uh, the elementary school. So to use the elementary school in Rochester as the, as the sole building, their initial recommendation is that you put a 4,200 square foot uh, uh, expansion on that building, of which about 700 is right here in the entranceway, and then you can either put the other 3,500 here or here on one of the two sides of the gymnasium. 
when they look at the uh, high school right now, this is the high school. Uh, this is the high school space layout. These uh, colored areas are the areas that we are currently using. The purple area we use for art. The green is obviously the auditorium and stage, and then that brown area is the back of the auditorium and stage, the music room. So that's what that building is currently being used for. They, they think that if we use that building and converted that building, the high school building, into the uh, Rochester School, they would uh, recommend changing this area up at the top into a multi-purpose room, changing the current art room into a kitchen, uh, putting the art uh, and, and, and instead of maker spaces kind of up into this part of the, of, of the building, and then converting offices kind of in, into here. So they, uh, they, and they, when they, when they do that calculation, they say that building has about a thousand uh, extra square feet. But that's uh, that's their their description of using uh, the, the high school building as, as the sole school building uh, in Rochester. Now, it's important to understand that this is just a, a preliminary assessment. This is just getting some experts in to measure out the space, to see how our space conforms to what the typical school in Vermont is and what the recommendations of the, the, the Department of Education are. This is not something that the board is, is saying, we're gonna do this. As a matter of fact, the only thing that I could say that do definitively that this has told the board to do is that in Stockbridge, when we put the generator in, don't put it here, don't put it there. That's about the, the, the only firm conclusion that we've really, at this point, drawn um, uh, from that information. Once we get the final report from them, that's going to analyze uh, heating zones and furnace life and roof life and all those sorts of information. We're going to put together a, uh, a presentation to the, towns, the, the, the town communities and start that discussion of figuring out what the towns want to do. For reference, um, should, uh, should, we, should the board decide that, that uh, they really could be in one building or the other, whether we expand the elementary school in Rochester or move into the high school building in Rochester. The, uh, the way that the other building is disposed of is it is first offered to the town. So it would be offered to the town of Rochester for the sum of one dollar. Um, if Rochester took, that up on, uh, took us up on that, they would, uh, they would receive the building and any repairs or, or, or uh, work that had been done by the school board within uh, the last five years of them trying to dispose of the building, they would have to pay the school board back for it. So some of the work we've done in, 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 the, in the elementary building uh, already, if we, if we uh, gave the building to the town and they flipped it, they would pay the district back for, 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 for more recent work. But again, we're not, we're, we're not at, the, at the position of having a, a, a conversation yet about, you know, here's a plan that we're going forward with. We're, we're, we're trying to let you know what information we've gathered as of this moment and uh, what we're thinking about and letting you know that there's going to be conversations coming to the communities about the buildings and uh, uh, what their future is. Um, you said there's a thousand square feet that's not going to be used. In this no, in the, in the Rochester building, no, the, when, you, when, you, when you put in uh, all, of the, the, all the facilities that the school would need, um, you, know, you add, you, you change this to the, the cafeteria jam, you put a kitchen over here, you know, you, you reconfigure this from, to, to get all the office space in. The building itself is about a thousand square feet more than the, than the, than the agency of educa education said. It's not like there's a room we would be closing or whatever. It's just that it's, so it's not like bigger. the second floor that we could like rent that office space. Or right, right. Now, the, I mean, conceivably, uh, you know, conceivably the school board could could do something like that with with, with the other building, which our building they, they were you we were using. But again, we haven't we haven't come that far. The general uh, conversations that I've been hearing around school boards about things like that is that you know school boards really should not necessarily try to be third party landlords or uh, you know run a health club or or, or, or do anything like well, that. I'm thinking more like supervisory. Yeah, they could. I mean, there, there, there could be space. There could be space for for. Uh, um, we have we, we, we have a, a pull out classrooms uh, for multi tiered support kids. You know, we could we could use some. We could use more of that space there for that. You know, it's it, 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 we certainly could probably find a a, a good educational uh, use to do with that. Or like you said, you know, bring bring in some sort of union offices. Now, before I start talking about the budget. Does anyone have any more questions about this, sir? Yes. Is the uh, facilities evaluation including include uh, uh, potential for solar on those buildings? 
there's a, there's a discussion of uh, energy options. Yeah, we haven't uh, we we didn't pay to have a whole to to, to have a, uh, a a really thorough analysis of uh, where we, where would you put a biomass versus where would you put solar versus is it is it viable for wind? But there's there's a, a general uh, discussion about efficiencies of systems and about alternative energy. Frank, right. oh, the next, um, the generator, what would it be? Gas for the. Um, We've got we've got uh, we've got some bids out for propane. We're also reaching yeah. out to see if uh, there's ways that we could do like a power wall yeah. kind of option. We're, we're 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 waiting to hear back from Green Mountain Power on yeah. that. That's pretty much. Uh, we use too much wattage for that right now, so we'd have to explore a different avenue. Ah, okay. Okay. I have a question. Um, why have to I mean, build the generator and then? Uh, because there was, there was, uh, after Irene, there was all that error money, there was all the, the recovery money, and as the, at the, we were thinking that we could maybe have done that with, with Stockbridge's portion, but at the time, the, the, the superintendent then, uh, was saying, no, we're going to be distributing the error money from the SU level, and it never, it never, it, it got distributed, uh, to, to, to other things. Oh, okay. Wait. Uh, yes, uh, was that a reference to a commercial use of a power wall that Tesla has? There, they have commercial units for industry. Right. Uh, right now, Green Mountain Power is referred us to someone that does commercial, but Green Mountain Power itself. Okay, but that's not, not quite what I heard. Okay. Thank you. Right. Oh, uh, with that, with that. Um, Building that was the Rochester Junior Senior High School. I mean, it, this is just a consideration of space, not a consideration of insulation or. Right. The, yeah. This 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 analysis here is still just a consideration of space. Yeah. We haven't uh, we haven't gotten the numbers on you know insulation, how the zones break out, um, you know the, the those things, you know, how the windows are, um, those those type of issues. But, but how it, that, that space is still being maintained for the... In right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we, uh, we've been keeping it at 55. There's three zones in the high school building, two of which are being heated at 55 degrees. Yeah. The third zone, which controls the auditorium, the music room, and where the art room is, have been heated at 68 degrees because kids are in there. Okay. Going on to the budget, um, when we build a budget, we have really five uh, things we're trying to do with the budget. We're trying to align our education and our operational systems. We, we're, we're trying hard, and the, this report is part of it, to, to, to uh, budget to understand our infrastructure needs. Um, we're, we're working to develop the Rochester Transition blue, uh, Blueprint, determine the Stockard space configuration, and then, as always, we're trying to create an educational strategic plan. We're trying to uh, our reading scores, we're trying to improve our kids' community engagements, we're trying to, uh, to, to, to improve uh, uh, the supports we give them and, and, and the, the learning we provide, Frank. And I assume you're, uh, you're implementing the uh, White River Valley Supervisor Union strategic plan, and that this strategic plan would be in line with Yes, that. yes, we, we, we support it, we're working, we're, we're, we're working on the, uh, the SU strategic plan. Um, it's got a lot of it's got a lot of good things going for it. In, in particular, the, the focus on getting all kids reading a grade by third grade is something that we are, 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 are really. So you were thinking this this district has had a brand, which is wellness and outdoor learning. I can't remember the other one. How, how has that been operating as a driver of how things are? So um, we <coughs> kind of gone at three different approaches, I would say. There's been the literacy. Literacy's been a huge focus, but in terms of wellness, um, K through six, both buildings uh, can, did winter wellness together for six weeks, which some students did downhill skiing or snowboarding at the Snow Bowl. Others did cross-country skiing and snowshoeing at Riker. Um, both buildings have physical education two times a week where fitness goals have been set based on state standards and they're monitored several times throughout the course of the year. Uh, outdoor ed, several classes uh, in both buildings participate in outdoor education programs, um, commonly known as Forest Friday, uh, for a lot of different <coughs> age groups. And it's a 
have two teachers, the, uh, the 5-6 teacher in this building, but also our shared music teacher, both come from outdoor ed backgrounds, where they run out outdoor education programming for other students. So those are just the high points. Well, you, I mean, I know Amy, I know Amy Braun was doing very interesting things with outdoor and quality, and mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I have to assume that what she's been developing could somehow be a, a model that could be applied to you. Right, I would say that um, both kindergarten teachers in both buildings have implemented an outdoor education, implement and use an outdoor education program. And they've also done several field trips together, implementing those things together, from going to different state parks, to going apple picking, taking apart an apple, learning about the seeds, making a math lesson, a cooking lesson, a nutrition lesson. Um, those are just some of the examples. Yeah, uh, another thing as far as our education strategic plan that we're doing, uh, the SU has uh, uh, recently licensed a, a data warehouse called Otis. So we'll be tracking uh, a student outcomes and student progress in that. And one of the things that we're, ex it, it, uh, the Stockbridge Rochester uh, uh, group is excited about in that is one of the things we often find is that we're really good at tracking you know, what happens to our kiddos while they're in our building, K through six, but it can be hard to see how well they do seven through 12, and having, you know, having a data ware warehouse in place where we can start plugging in that information, whether we're getting it from Woodstock or Sharon Academy or Middlebury or uh, uh, you know, wherever, so that we can start seeing you know, the stuff we did in, in K to six, did it bear fruit in seven through 12? Are we able to see where you know, where we need to, to work in our curriculum to help our kids that are going to, um, you know, uh, White, River, White River Valley or going to, to, to Woodstock or, or wherever, so that we're really able to, to, to understand, you know, what the uh, outcomes of the foundation, the, the foundational education for the kids here. Have those schools been, have those, I mean, like Middlebury, have, I mean, have those schools been recruiting here through, at the appropriate time? For the, We've had, uh, we had, uh, it, was, it was here, it was Right, we had a middle school fair night, um, and it was supposed to be here this year, next year it'll be over right. in Rochester, and there was Woodstock, Sharon Academy, Randolph, Otter Valley, White River Valley School. Yeah, Middlebury did not, because they used a different process last year that seemed to work well, and that was kind of their feedback. And then, so. uh, yeah, we will part of the Right, no one's going to have right there. Kathy. Okay. Um, it can start at any point in time, I believe. So for some kids, we've, we have it. Um, and for other kids, it's, we're still working on the foundational skills. So it's important. I, I just wanted to call people's attention to and I think about projections of where the kids have um, white 23 right. projections, which is very helpful. Uh, so, some highlights of the budget. Uh, we're, the board is happy to report that we were able to return uh, $236,516 to, uh, to the taxpayers. So, uh, that just is that the, 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 we would not take a surplus and spend it. We just float it into this year's budget and uh, use it to reduce uh, reduce total costs. On the expenditure side of, of things, uh, our expenditures increased 3.7 percent. Uh, there was an 11 percent uh, increase in uh, health care. Uh, there was what was the wage increase this, this last year? 2.9. Um, our local revenues increased 1.7%, uh, even though uh, our tuition and uh, uh, preschool subsidies had a drop of $86,000. Um, the true tax increase in this from this budget over last year's is 2.4%. And by true tax increase, I mean do not consider the CLA, do not consider uh, the, uh, the uh, merger incentives. If you just look at the, at the, the base, uh, amount of taxes that were uh, uh, the tax rate last year of 1.60 to 1.66 is a 2.4 uh, increase, which also means that uh, the budget also uh, shows that our income-based homestead rate is 2.1, uh, 2.81 uh, percent on the first uh, uh, 400 thousand uh, dollars of value of your homestead if you make up to 90 thousand dollars. There's a uh, yellow-headed sheet like this 
that uh, Bill Edgerton puts together for us uh, every year that talks about uh, uh, your school tax based on your income versus uh, based on the, the value of your property. Um, the uh, interesting thing is about 60%, two thirds of, uh, of, of Vermonters pay, uh, pay the majority of, of, of their income or majority of their property tax based on, on their income level, not on, not on the uh, uh, property tax value, at least on the first, again, the first $400,000 of, of your homestead. Um, I was reading the, the report by the board. Um, Can you comment a little bit on the meeting pre K grant funding? Has been eliminated. Um, that me Yeah, there was a uh, grant that we applied for uh, and went away this this year. Uh, it was a state grant, uh, so it was there uh, to try to encourage more preschool education, more facilities, more uh, resources, and it's now. Um, so those were part of Act 77. Was that? Yeah, 177. Isn't that a mandate? Yeah. Okay, okay. It, 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 it absolutely is. Just because you have a mandate doesn't mean the government has to fund it. Oh, that's <laughs> right. But is that something that we should be talking to our representatives about? Yes, we'd love it if you would. So, uh, as, I, uh, as I think we explained when we talked about the merger, uh, the incentive dropped 25% this year. It goes from $0.08 cents, uh, off the tax rate to $0.06. Cents. Uh, the CLAs dropped in both towns uh, from around 114% to 110 in Rochester, so about 3.5% value loss there, and 4% loss in Rochester. In Stockbridge, we went from 104 to about 100%. Uh, our ADM, which is your average daily membership, it's a weighted count of the kids that are in the school. Uh, it, 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 it tries to, to, to account for the fact that it costs more to educate a high school kid than it does a preschool, or so a preschool kid is like 0.8 of a kid, a high school kid is like 0.115 uh, of a kid. Uh, English as second language affects the ADM count. Uh, the uh, uh, number of kids that are on free and reduced lunch, so uh, the, 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 the poverty level of the towns affects ADM, and then it's obviously just the number of bodies. Um, so our ADM declined 2.3%, uh, uh, which is, uh, uh, given some of the declines we've had uh, previously is, is, uh, is pretty good. Um, the tuition we pay out for middle and high school increased 4.3% uh, in this budget. We also uh, increased our professional development. Normally it's around $15,000. We added $8,500, so about 50% more to have uh, some special literacy training to bring our, uh, our, our uh, teachers up to speed on, on uh, some of the new uh, uh, curriculum and uh, literacy offerings we're, we're, we're trying to bring there. I'm surprised I got asked this question, uh, but it's always funny the questions that people ask when they read the budget. Um, no, we are not dropping the audit. If you look at the budget, it says that our audit was, it lists an audit amount for uh, this year and it says we're paying nothing. We are, we are professionally audited uh, every year. We just have an SU-wide uh, contract now. So the audit's moving off our book and it's gonna, or, or, or off our books as a direct line item and it'll be a, a, a shared cost that's passed down to us in our central office assessment. And speaking of our central office assessment and our, our special education assessment, uh, it is flat. It's actually down $952. It's around $395,000. But the costs uh, we paid for special education, we paid for central office, are, uh, are, are pretty much the same this year. So going ahead, these are the opportunities the board is, 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 uh, is, is still working towards. Um, we're working towards our, our, you know, a visionary uh, elementary education model that's, that's sustainable and exciting, an emphasis on uh, STEM and STEAM and, and collaborative learning. We're still working really hard to have uh, intensive arts experiences shared between uh, uh, both campuses. We've got a person championing that right here. <laughs> um, we are working uh, at our outdoor education experiences. We're working on our farm to school experiences. We're trying to uh, explore the things we can do together, like Starbase, uh, taking the kids to Boston. Um, you know, things that we can do uh, more affordably because we, we, we've got a, 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 better, a bigger group of kiddos. And then we're really interested in, in, uh, in, in trying to, to leverage where we live. I mean, we're in the middle of the Green Mountains. It's gorgeous here. It's a, it's a great active community, and we really want to, to, to showcase that and support that with our kids 
and attract uh, the, the, the kind of families that live here now. We want to increase our, uh, our, our, uh, our kids coming in from Hancock and Granville and, and Pittsfield. Um, and, and also just be the school that attracts kids to, to, to move to this area to say, you know, when I'm thinking about moving to, to central Vermont, maybe I'll pick Rochester or Stockbridge instead of, instead of uh, uh, Bethel or, or Royalton. So that's where we're hoping, where we're hoping to go, to produce a uh, affordable and exciting education for our kids. With that, questions about the budget? Sure. I get a question right now on uh, page 11 of the town uh, school report uh, about uh, <coughs> the income side. And I think I don't want to have to come to the board and get a for it. But yep. uh, I see a uh, uh, proposed budget at this $9,000 from the, uh, uh, from the uh, Trustee of Public Funds. And uh, uh, there was not any last year. So what has been the change there? Uh, last year, we did not, uh, we didn't, we, we, we specifically, we hadn't had advice from our attorney yet as to uh, whether or not the bequests that make up the public funds, the, 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 the Whitcomb funds, the funds in Rochester, um, are, are, you know, they, they were, uh, the, the bequests were saying they were for the, the, the educational benefit of the kids in Stockbridge, from the Stockbridge Trusts, and uh, for the educational benefit of the kids in Rochester from the Rochester Trusts. Um, we wanted to make sure that because we're a unified district, that using those using those monies was not going to, to violate the terms of the bequest and make the money go away. Our attorneys told us that uh, given the size of the overall budget and the amount of money that, 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 that we're pulling in, um, that it is perfectly fine to use monies for, money uh, for, the, for the joint operations of the schools because the amount of funds that are pulled from either Stockbridge or Rochester in this year, it's just from Stockbridge, um, are, uh, you know, we can, we can point to an equal amount of money that's being spent on Stockbridge children going on their share of a trip, for example, or doing their share of, a, of an activity. So we were told that this does not uh, uh, violate uh, the terms of the quest. The interesting thing was that, that the board had not really considered was we had asked for a one-year moratorium last year. Uh, the difference in the way the funds are uh, 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 drawn down and allocated between Stockbridge and Rochester. Um, in Rochester, the trustees of public funds expect the school board to uh, to uh, you know ask for some of their money, and then they yeah. give it. And in, in Stockbridge, the trustees of the public funds look at the performance of the funds. They look at what the, they've given the school historically, and they give the money to. The, to, to the school rather than the school saying, give us $9,000 of our money. The, the trustees of public funds say, here's $9,000 that, that, that uh, we're giving you for the operation of the school. So we did not, we did not go out and go through the, 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 the regular protocol with Rochester. Now, what that means, however, is as we, one of the things we, we look at when we consider funding the, both the feasibility study uh, and the, the, the generator, the $90,000 worth of projects, we certainly can go to, to Barb DeHart and the, the, the Rochester Trustees of Public Funds and say, to backfill the rest of this project, you know, now that we've got our VLCT grants for the generator, now that we've gotten our Efficiency Vermont grants for the, the, the energy studies of the building, now that we've, we've pulled money from the, the uh, daycare sale funds or wherever we're taking them, we could also still go and get that. And regardless of how those projects sugar out, They'll be in the they'll be in the audit uh, for for, for uh, next year. So you'll you'll see you know you, you'll see the, the disposition of how we pay for all those things. I, I understand. The nine thousand dollars came from what board of trustees of public funds? They came from the stock board of trustees of public funds. Uh, Bill Edgerton did. They came from the group, Yes. Well, then my follow-up question would be that uh, what happened to the endowments that are not listed in here that Rochester had, the Rochester School had? and was controlling it themselves, not by the right of the uh, trustee of public funds. Right. The, as, and Amy, correct me yeah, I've, I've had a uh, meeting with Barb DeHart recently to try to get a handle on all those funds. They're still... Have those funds gone to the trustee of Rochester, the school funds? No. They have not gone. Well, um, Where are they, they? I don't know really how to answer that correctly. The, the, um, trustees of Public Funds has managed 
the school funds in the past. Yeah. So okay. they have they have separately though. Separately though. Right. Completely separate. They right. just right. because they were doing it anyway with right. similar funds, even right. funds with similar names. Um, so they have been managing them. Um, but meanwhile there will be some income coming from yes. the development that the Dirty Republic in Rochester has invested but hasn't labeled them in the Rochester County Board and I don't see them at all in the okay. Unified District Report. Okay, I again I had met with her a couple weeks ago to try to get a handle on this and there Those is some more digging to do to look through some files to find some paperwork and find the right contacts for who's the, the financial manager right. of in the bank, you know. Right. It, it, it's very important. It is very that important. That these clubs not get mixed into the big pot. Right. And, and so forth. But I mean, that, that's correct. There are separate funds like the Kirkpatrick Fund, the Wing Fund, right. that are specifically you know, designated for Rochester the school. And then there's another you know, set of funds. And, and what, I mean, it has been the case in the past that, I mean, the school would make the request for, for, for funding and they've been funded separate from the, you know, wing for for that and other funds. So that's something, I mean, uh, the Harvey's right, there's the two separate sources there. Yeah. Yeah. I think the, the longer question is for Amy then, that I would like to know how much of the school uh, endowment funds got transferred to the Rochester trustee of public funds. Yeah. And I assume that they can do it for both the town schools, but I don't know that. They are town elected, uh, not school elected, right. a trustee. Yeah. And so, and anyway. Right, and like you said, it wasn't that it got transferred to them, it's just they took management of them. Over. Right, I understand that. And uh, the other question is, as a total of tuition projections, this is all part of the report on page 10, uh, I come up with 83 proposed uh, students that are going to be commissioned out uh, next year, uh, at every 2020. And so what percentage is the 83, that my math could be wrong, uh, of uh, is cycling and traffic? I, I'm very curious about that. Uh, total. Okay, can I? Can I like figure, uh, yeah, let me figure it out. Okay, because <laughs> it's all merged together right now, and I do have it in separate. So it's just going to take me a second. Okay. So <laughs> no, it's a good question. I'm just curious. I think we need to know. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, she's adding that up, then. Yeah. Well, my, my question goes to Mr. Harvey's. I wasn't looking at percentage. I was just looking at how many kids from each town are in the district. Yeah. Oh, that was perfect. Total? Yeah, that is. Yeah, how many Rochester kids, how many Stockbridge, how many can Granville, Hancock, Pittsfield, wherever anybody might be sending kids to our schools, how many kids are there from each town? Uh, in, like, each, so there's. You're talking preschool through sixth grade, right? I take all 12 grades. Mm -hmm. Okay, give me, I can tell you through sixth grade right now. Okay. I find out. So uh, preschool through sixth grade in Stockbridge, there's 54 students currently enrolled. Uh, give me a second on Rochester here. She can be enrolled. 93. 93, Lisa. Yeah. Yes, 93. Thank you, Lisa. So Nancock, Greenville, Pittsfield. That's total in Rochester. Oh, I was what I was trying to figure out was how many kids there were in each town. In a town school. Yeah. Okay. So you mean excluding Granville and Hancock and Rochester and excluding how many kids from No, how many kids from Granville go to the school? How many kids from Rochester? How many kids from Hancock? How many kids from Stockbridge? How many kids from Pittsfield or anywhere else where they might be doing? In other, I mean, this is I mean, this child is indicating, you know, kids about tuitioning out. I mean, I had a question about the kid is tuitioning out in fifth grade from middle school. But actually, I mean, if a, if a kid from Granville is going to Rochester Elementary, there's a tuition coming into the district. Right, that's the revenue coming yeah. into the district. Correct. Uh, right. Why do we're gaming. I not have an answer to that question. Uh, the, the, the kid, the, the fifth grader that's going to, to Middlebury has been going there. You're asked this question last year, and Bonnie's answer, yeah. as 
I recall, was it's a it's a special placement. Right. But I think maybe really like talk more about it. Honestly, right. I think it's Mary Hogan will be going to. But is it a parental request or it's a special placement? Or? I, I if, if if we're funding it, it's a, it's, a, it's a special placement. Right. We would we would fund it. So, I mean, this one's question is important. This one's question is important because it's indicating, well, this kid lives in Granville. So this kid went to Rochester Elementary rather than, you know, Rissen. So that's, a, that's an important in terms of... Right, right. I don't think the details here. And I can tell you that if, if, if we could, if we could uh, divide, if I knew what the two, I'm trying to remember what the what our tuition we charged was. Yeah, we didn't. You know the five hundred and eleven thousand five hundred dollars of tuition that we that we brought in uh, this last year represents. I want. I think it's like 15, 15 grand and change of kid. So, I mean, five hundred and eleven thousand divided by fifteen thousand would be a, a close a close number. Of how many kids we tuition in? Because that's our. So I mean, our, our income from tuition is in uh, the current year, uh, we, we projected five hundred and eleven thousand five hundred dollars, and we were sending out about twice that in terms of uh, high school and middle school education, and that's often been a, a, a close to the ratio we've had here. So our Pittsfield kids have dropped off recently. So to me, how going forward? I mean, I really appreciate seeing this. So that kind of graph, yeah. like switching again, would be very good to see too. Okay, Thank yeah, you. We, can, we can we can certainly put that together. Noted. Okay. Sir, so uh, I have I have two questions. Uh, who is there? Who's the principal author of the budget? Who, who does most of the heavy lifting? Is it the SU? Is it the principal? Is it the? It's uh, the, the the SU in conjunction with the principals. So let me. This is why I asked this. Question. I will make myself vulnerable here to the crowd and say, I had a really hard time making heads or tails out of this. And, and I, um, I, you know, and I had other people in Rochester say, well, you know, you just have to trust the school board. So uh, I, when I was in business, and we had to present a budget to a client in order to get their money. It had to be very clear to that client what we were spending their money on. And we had to prepare a narrative for every section of the budget that explained this is what we're going to do with this, this is what we're going to do. And then, because otherwise, we're going to give you the money. And so we have seen to have a situation here with a lot of arcane uh, terms and the organization of the budget is different than spreadsheets that I'm used to. So I, I, I really don't have anything to say except to beg you in this process, whoever, I, mean, I, I presume there's probably state software or something that makes it look like this. But uh, if you have people that are just kind of waving their hands and say, well, I, there's no point in paying attention to it, because, you know, I just can't, you know, then you're cutting the citizens off from the process. You're cutting them off from caring about the school. You're separating them. And that's yeah, I, I would like to also encourage people to come to the three meetings that we've had before this that we went through the budget yeah. line by line and asked questions about what everything was for and questioned it and they were backing out us more. I understand and agree with what you're saying, but I would also like to encourage people to get involved a little earlier to really get good answers to what you're looking for. Yeah, the other question is, um, do I understand we're paying the SU 8375, something like that, 883,759, is that what we pay for SU services? Is that the total? No, there's a number of No, there's um, more, it's more than that. If you look on, um, if you look on page 18, um, the, uh, that's the, uh, um, that's the, the central office budget. Yeah. And then on page uh, 23 is the triple uh, E, the essential early education budget and the special education budget. So uh, we're paying uh, uh, 252,251,187, and then uh, 239,290 in, in central office. All told, our, our central office assessment is around uh, $395,000. So is there um, a legal reason why we can't treat the SU as a separate vendor, vote on it separately? So that, because as it is now, there's no bargaining. We have no bargaining. There is not, and as a matter of fact, we cannot. The way that the law, the way that the law works is is, is, is is very clear. 
we have to, and this is a, this is a problem, and, and you are not alone in Vermont in saying that, you know, SU budgets initially, you know, uh, were set up, and, and an SU is not a, a standalone uh, a unit that can that can uh, uh, have bank accounts or take loans or or you know really function. It was really originally designed to be just kind of an over uh, an educational. Uh, umbrella that employed a superintendent that would go around and interact with all the local boards of their individual schools, and all the school decisions were made at the local level. That shifted to the state, uh, and Act 46 was actually, you know, uh, one of the latest attempts to do that, where they said the, the, the preferred structure for Act for Act uh, 46 is not what, even what we do here. The preferred structure is what happened in Randolph, what happened in Woodstock, where a supervisory union becomes a supervisory district. So there's. There is a, uh, a, a, a one board that is both an SU board and a local board, because it's a local board that you elect and it's the local budgets you vote on. Um, but what has happened over the years is that more and more stuff has been given to the SU. Um, uh, transportation has been moved to the SU level. Um, all special education is all done at the SU level. Um, uh, auditing. auditing. Um, we, uh, uh, you know, the, the superintendent, all, all of the, the local boards and the SU board, um, you know, uh, uh, act as the board of directors and the, the, the superintendent is the CEO. So, for example, if we decided as a board, we hated Lindsay, Lindy, but we wanted her fine. <laughs> we could not. No. No. I, I, no. Absurd example to make the point, but the point is, we cannot, as a board, we cannot fire a principal. The only person that can fire the principal is the superintendent. The SU has, has, has accumulated a lot of power, and the way that, but the, the, the budgeting situation of that is still the way it was when the SU was really like a superintendent in a pickup truck. The SU budget has to be paid, and we, the, the, the taxpayers, do not get to vote on it. The SU board members get to vote on it. But the, the, the individual taxpayers do not get to vote on, on, on that budget at all. And uh, as a matter of fact, it has to be paid. So the first thing, so the SU has to be paid, and sending tuition has to be paid. So when our families say we want our kids to go to Middlebury, we pay that. When they say we want them to go to, to TSA, and they pay the, where they pay the state average because it's an independent school, we pay that. Um, we try to make sure that we're you know, checking residency and we're not paying for things we're not supposed to pay for, but we pay the cost we, we, we need to pay for our, our kids to go to other schools, and that has to be paid before our local budget. So the, 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 the money that, that we give to this local school is, the, is really the only dollars that we get to control, and they're, they're the, you know, the, the, the other monies, the money for the SU and the money for uh, outside tuition, we just have to spend. You know, parents get to decide where their kids go, we don't get a choice in that, and that's fine. That's the law, you know. And, and a lot of people—that's why people like choice. They get to send their kids wherever they want. But we also have to pay whatever the SU decides uh, decides we should pay. And if based we, on a if we don't like the, what the SU has, what, what leverage do we, we not? Or are you saying there isn't? If the the only leverage is that we, as a, as a combined board, we have three votes out of the uh, what 16 that are there, and you know that SU that SU board does vote on things. Frank. I mean, it's just too simple a way to think about it, that the SU assessment is here and let's treat the SU like a vendor. Because, I mean, it's just, I mean, it, there's, there's been, in, um, this, the strategic plan we're calling for, uh, you know, literacy uh, by grade three. And there's been just, I mean, there's been this substantial investment by the SU in literacy material. But I mean, that money doesn't come from the SU. That money comes from this grant, that grant, this grant, federal money, state money. Sure, and so, some of it comes from us, yeah. Some, some of it does come from us in terms of the assessment. But I think you, I, I don't know, uh, but I think you have to think about that uh, assessment as, as enabling a multiplier that the SU is allowing, that for that money you're getting, you know, Access or grant application for it's just you think similar things called SU vendor what's you know cut off and negotiate. It's just too simple a way to think about it. It's much more complicated than that. Thank you, Kathy. I'm going to push on page 14. Um, it's called Reporting Requirements for Special Education Funding. Um, and it says that 
that's the kids. That's the kids for the seventh and twelfth graders. The Vermont by Vermont LEA it means Vermont Local Education Authority. So what the what the the, the the new law has changed is they wanted. It used to be we just said here's the tuition we're paying out. So if you look at uh, and this is by the way is uh, in that first block that one uh, one thousand one hundred block right regular ed instruction. She's talking about line uh, five sixty one down there. Um, if you look at our 19 budget, there's just one sum of uh, 1,213,898. And then the net, and then for this year coming forward, there's 971,315 going to the Vermont LEAs and then tuition to private sources, 94,708. The state is the state has said that we want they want us to split out what we're sending to Vermont public schools, which are the Vermont LEAs, versus what we're sending to uh, independent schools, uh, accredited independent schools, um, which is the uh, 294. Well, what are we paying them for? We're paying them for the tuition of our seventh and twelfth graders. Oh, that's, that's where that's where that's, that's where the cost of, oh, of, of the vegan kids there. going to Woodstock, my kid going to Sharon Academy. Yeah. Okay, so you know, that's in that that's in that line. So this is where the tuition money is going to? Yeah. That's it's going to yeah, but it's it's all summed up. So the pay the, that graph on page twenty, where or was it twenty? Ten rather, where all the kids are being shown. That total, that one million two hundred fifty-one two hundred dollars, is that line item you saw in the budget. So this is all our, this is where all our high school kids. No worries. Yeah, I saw the Vermont LEA link. That's all. Yeah, this is basically a way of saying that school. Frank, I tried to wade into that supervisor's union thing, but I don't know whether Bruce was going to talk about that or whether Debbie was going to talk about it. Well, the only thing I'll say is that over the years we've gotten more and more responsibility. Those things have come out of your budget and gone into the SU budget, um, and you pay for them, but you pay for them back in that way. So, um, and, and every year we get more and more things that we're supposed to be in charge of: transportation, special ed, food service, the audit. Um, it appears to me, and I'm sorry, I'm trying to juggle this on my lap, so it's a little bit difficult, but it appears to me that the book that we got versus the pages of this canvas have over six pages in the same. Yes. yes. That was yeah. a yeah. error. Yes. Well, yeah. Oh, sure. <laughs> Budget should be in order. That you can hand it and print it out. That should be all in order as printed. I know we're very sorry that this happened. This is, um, Where are those? Uh, there's some right here. But if you wanted to talk about any changes, yep. how would you describe what to do? Okay, you see how there's numbers um, that. The so like the page one of description that says it's 1,100, it says regular ed instruction as a main title at the very top of the first page that you have. So then you would, in this section, you can have, you would refer to it as the 1,100 and then you line 320, say. And so you'd go down to 320 and that's contracted instructional services. So I can see how it would be confusing for you to be there. Yes, And this is also going to change because the state is still arguing over a new charge. Are they finished the charge? Comes down.
good things, uh, you know, good things coming for you or something. We're, we're just glad that, that she's here. So, um, but yeah, but if you had a question about a line, that's a, that's a, a, a good way to refer to it. Sir. Uh, so I, I, I'm afraid of sounding stupid here because I didn't go to the meeting. So, so on page 19, uh, lines um, looks like uh, 580 travel, 610 supplies. And, you know, there's a tremendous difference between the numbers in the uh, fiscal year 20 budget proposed and the previous numbers. For instance, the actuals in, uh, in uh, 2018 for, I guess it's... Uh, and you're on page 19, page 19 under the White River Valley SU budget? Middle, the middle of this page here. Yeah, so that's our SU budget. Just so why, is there, why is there a giant difference between that number, $24,000 one one and, and 1200 in the previous one? It's hard to find this in it. The left margin has a number. Yeah, look, for the 610 supplies general. Right. There's a left. Page On page 19, let's just take one. I'm just, wait, 610 supplies. So it's in the right. Yeah. The right column is 24750 And in the 19 budget, it's about uh, $1,200. So it's such a dramatic difference. There must be some reason for that. All right, so that's the SE budget. So, well, we're paying for that. Right, right, right. So I can't speak to what's in that. So you, the, what's in the supply line item? I can for Rochester. Does somebody so know? Who do you know? Ask. Which line is it? Um, All right. Curriculum so instruction 2212, page 19. Page 19. Line 610. Supplies general. There's several 610. You have to look at the heading. Page 19. 2212. 2212. Say, I'll just prove my argument here. But if we can't find it. But you said 2212, curriculum instruction, 610. 24750 And then the, the year before, 12, uh, 1200 So why is there such a huge It's not a little difference, it's a massive difference. I agree. Why is that? I don't know if that. But I would just, just to blow my own horn again, that we have to struggle to try to come to this kind of a common understanding about one line in the item. It means it's a difficult document to deal with. Well, that page doesn't come from us. That's the entire SU. Right, but, it, but so still, it's easy to understand. And I'm not trying to, I, I'm just, I'm struggling with this. I'm not, yeah, no, I, yeah, no, I, I hate to be only simple, but I, I'm then if you look If you look at the line below it, 640, that went from $400 yeah. to 28000 Of course, that whole block in there was software program that we have been told to, to do, basically, from the state. A lot of these figures have been clumped together, whereas you would find zero in some accounts. They've been regrouped in other accounts, and they don't compare very well with the one previous because of the change in software. And that's happening across the SU all the time. We didn't pick this software conversion. This is something that the SU has had thrust on it Bruce, Bruce, Bruce. I, I didn't pick the software either. I'm just going to pay for it out of my taxes. So if, if you can't tell me, and your business manager can't tell me what this figure is, or you say, then, then how are we supposed to operate as intelligent voters? Yeah. I don't want you to know. So you're saying to me now, and I don't want to argue with you, neither of you know what this is about. Except I started March 1st. I'm not, I'm not. No, I'm explaining. I started March 1st, and all of these budgets were done prior to me starting. So I have not gone line by line under each one of these budgets to analyze what they are or what they're built for. So I have to go back when someone asks a question like that, I then have to go back to the budget that was built and I have to find the detail that supports that number. I don't know it off the top of my But can we pause for a moment and see how silly this moment is? We have, we have we have a we have the note next to the uh, subtotals that says that it reflects a strategic plan initiative for student achievement cost to be offset by existing grant funds. Oh, okay. So I'm not I, I, I'm not sure what that means. My dad so is saying it has something to do with the FAP program. That's what my dad is saying. We don't hired, know that. We hired a literacy coach that will be working throughout the SU trying to work with teachers and she's going to be mobile basically to to work with them on on uh, direct instruction and and, uh, and and trying to make sure that everybody's doing it the same way 
that's probably a part of this, but we've also got grant funds to be able to pay for some of this. Are so we voting on this tonight? I'm making this up. No, they're not voting on it. So we're not voting on it. Actually, this is how you start adding up. No, they're not voting on it. No, no, no. I'm talking about the information, the flow of information, what we're looking at. I don't want to take up any of it, but I made it my point. And I'm not, you know, I'm not busting on you guys. I'm just making it I think, though, No, you are very correct. It is very frustrating. The state changes the way that they want they, they, they want information presented and handled, and it's you know it's it is it's a very obtuse process that gets you know it, it seems like more and more confusing uh, uh, year year by year as they layer on something else. Just think about the the, the conversation in Montpelier uh, last month where they were going to they wanted to talk about cleaning up Lake Champlain and the rivers and they thought well we'll take some money out of the Ed Fund and then we'll add in a new tax for software for cloud software to replenish the Ed Fund. And it's like okay maybe we'll just take the new tax and use that to clean up the water. But they, there's really a lot of, 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 of it seems like robbing Peter to pay Paul that, that, that goes on and gets baked into the, in, in, into the way the information gets pre uh, presented and it does get really really confusing. So I, 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 I certainly I'm, I'm gonna the other way for a minute that we held three meetings. We were here till 10 o'clock at night. And so there's a lot that we that we tried to get done here. And during those meetings, that's when we went, as you said, line by line, item by item. And everyone had the ability to make their presentation but at that point. The, the, I just want to make sure that people know that we're, I hear your point, and I've heard it from several people that you deserve an organized budget that has narrative titles that tell you what this page is about. Mm -hmm. And that that's part of transparency and that's right. part of that's making a public document. And that this is, as, as our first, this is our first report, and as someone who did the cover, you know, at a meeting, because we needed a cover right then, I understand we, we're, we're hearing you, and it, we'll do better, you know. Um, there are things from the state, there are things from the supervisory union, but we hear you. We need to do better in our in our presentation. Because one of our big things when we got together uh, originally was transparency and being able to be, you know, that you could understand what we're talking about when we're talking about it. So I hear, we hear you, we really do. And we're taking lots of notes on this to make this clearer and clearer process. <coughs> that said, please keep asking every question you have because that's what tonight's about, is to make sure you're clear before you vote. Well, to, to Tara's credit, Tara put, put in, with the few months that she's been oh, in yeah. here, a lot of work kind of fixing yeah. and trying to line up items that were different from last year and right. explaining it to us. Um, so it's not just something that we're going blind towards. She's definitely put in a lot of work and the principal's working with her as well. But to that you note, know, Jamie, I appreciate it. We can't always, not everyone here can make those meetings. So we rely on this information when it comes in our mailbox. I have a full-time job, two side gigs, and other things that I have going on, so I can't be here all the time when you have those meetings because I have other obligations. No, but no, this, right. is, the, the, this is the piece of the information that I count on when it shows up that I'm gonna have that week to be able to look at and decipher and ask my questions. And I appreciate that, and I do agree with, with Ethan. And, you know, I don't want to be defensive about this. We want to be transparent. We want everyone to know, because we want your support. These are small schools. We need your support to keep them going. And so you're right, I that information that. Should, should have been correct that got right. mailed out. Well, and you should shouldn't have. necessarily always have to come back when you could have been here the three meetings yeah. before, yeah. because that's not fair. Right, you're right. Yeah. Thank you. This is the single most important public document that, that we put out. And we should be able to stand behind it and say this is the absolute best we could do. And tonight's our nice field to make Yeah, exactly, exactly. And you should be able to come in with a good understanding of this. And we're hearing it. So we, didn't, we didn't do a good job. And we'll do better. But I do appreciate the fact that you guys do do this job. Because not everybody can. Ma'am? Perhaps um, you could explain the supervisory piece of it 
on uh, new grants that would support this um, type of expenditure, which might clarify why are these, uh, I mean, it might not be exact numbers, but you know, specifically what kind of grants would support those numbers. Well, there's, there's many grants. One of them is Medicaid. Mm -hmm. That's okay. Yeah. I know. That's all right. <laughs> Medicaid funds. Uh, we have just purchased uh, about uh, $450,000 of literacy money. Yeah. None of it has come out of your budget. Yeah. Uh, it's, it is money that has been kind of stockpiled uh, from Medicaid funds, which we get a percentage of. And that money. Uh, Part of the strategic plan was identifying a goal that wanted kids to be uh, on grade level by the end of third grade. And we are moving on that. We've hired a literacy coach that I was talking about before. So just because you see higher areas for like travel doesn't mean that there's not revenue that supports it coming from another place in order to be able to offset that. Um, in the case of the literacy effort, uh, all of the coaches pay and all of, uh, except for a period of time that she's working directly with kids, she's gonna be working with teachers. All of that is offset by the other <coughs> that we uh, identified coming out of Medicaid. Um, there is also uh, other, other grants and funds that uh, we have to create a plan every year and then we get federal grants through the state uh, to support these kind of efforts. So, um, the whole SU has, has profited from the stockpiling of those funds, and we are now spending that money to try to get the goal done uh, about getting our kids on grade level. And uh, that's just an example, I guess, uh, of, of how we use it. Or use it. I, I, I just wanted to, to say, if uh, you look at page 18, at the, the, the bottom list, I, it's, 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 again, it's not in an obvious place, but if you look where it says, uh, you, there's a grid that shows what everyone uh, is paying in the FY20 assessment, uh, and then below that it, it, it shows the total budget, budget expenditures. You see how that grid totals to a million two hundred six twenty-six dollars and sixty cents. If you look though, the budget expenditures of the uh, listed total are one million six hundred and forty-five dollars and fifty-five or six hundred forty-five thousand fifty-five dollars and sixty cents. And then we're, we're uh, lowering that amount. If you see where it says Medicaid and federal title funds, the, the, the million and six expenditures that are shown in that SU budget uh, that we were just looking at that had those, those jumps, you also see that there's revenues that are, that are one time grant revenues that are Medicaid, that Bruce just mentioned the Medicaid and the title monies that are bringing that million six down to the million two, which is the amount that you're assessed. And yes, that's not easy to read, and it took me staring at this five minutes, and I was supposed to know this document to find that. So it certainly supports your point, it supports what, what he's saying, but I think you, you, can, you can see where, so where you see some of those revenue jumps for, for the special projects, here's where you can see where they're, they're offset and not coming out of your pocket. I'm, I'm sure that they're there, and I'm certainly not accusing you guys. I love oh, no, 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 I, 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 I don't think you are. I'm, I'm just trying to show you that, that somewhere in there, there's, there's a bit of an answer and it's just I think one of the other things that happens is that because we spend our time in all these meetings going through all of this we end up uh, sometimes assuming that that uh, you, you know more of the, of the you, you have uh, some of the same arcane knowledge we do for that we're sorry Leslie you know where I'm coming from I was at the last meeting and I made my <clears throat> voice very clear I think um, the uh, literacy coach that you hired um, is she both certified? And I asked this at the last meeting, and I said that had to be, or I'm going to get up here and tell everybody my story. Well, I, um, don't I don't, I don't know that she's not. I don't know that she is. So she can't answer the question. Well, on the on the special ed director for the SU and. Um, we have um, Wilson certified. There's, there's what the literacy initiative is starting with is a tier one instruction or the instruction that all kids will get and they have a specific program. For that's that. not special education, that's. No, right. 
but the, the second level, the tier two at the intervention level, the kids might get a menu of many different programs which could include Wilson or some of the Wilson. Uh, well, it needs to be done alone. They can't be incorporated right. with other methods. So that's the, the third tier is the Wilson program or the Orton Gillingham program, a very specific language-based intensive program. So the tier two and the tier three could have, out, like tier two could have elements of Wilson and Orton Gillingham excuse me, like the foundation program is a Wilson program that is more for all kids. And so some kids might get that in tier two, but for those kids that need it, we do, we have been working on getting some of Wilson and Gordon Gillingham certified in all of our schools. <coughs> uh, we get That's been going on since my sons were in third, or in first grade, and they are now going to be sophomores, and I have them repeating you. And that was when they told me they had someone Wilson certified in the school. Yep. And it's still not happening. <coughs> and, and in six months on Wilson, they learned how to be in seventh grade. Where would they be right now if that had happened in third grade? Yeah, I, I agree 100% with you. And a lot of, you get a lot of people certified, and then they go to shops other places. That would be to make their job more, more appealing to them. Yeah. I agree. I still love to retain teachers. Um, we, this year we are in doing a collaboration with Woodstock. Um, so we have middle and high school teachers getting certified in Wilson, Just Words. Um, I see you at the uh, special education the convention that they had. Were you there? I wasn't there. My team was there. My family was there. Yes. Yeah. We got up and spoke to all the other schools mm -hmm. that were there. And so we're doing some training with them this summer. We're doing also in the middle, high school, and elementary. Um, people going on to the most important things. You're working with some wonderful people. Mm -hmm. They are amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Kathy. Okay. How does our, our supervisor union compare to the rest of the state on the emergency? And how does our small school stop the democracy compared to the state? Uh, I know our latest round of tests, we were at 44%. I don't yeah. know what the state average is. Um, the SU average is probably, we're, we're low here, and this is one of the reasons why we face the coach here part of the, part of the time. Um, I would say six, in the 60%, kids, kids being uh, on grade level, about 60%. Throughout the SU. And we're at 44. Mm -hmm. yeah. would be 
monies from the funds and also monies from the monies the trustees have in Rochester separately. Yeah. 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 Article 7, to elect directors to the Rochester Stockbridge 
Unified School District as follows. We need one director for a three year term for Rochester. I don't know who is.
have the meeting at the beginning of April, and there's parts of the, the, the uh, agenda or the, the warning that, that the townspeople disagree with or they want us to go back to the drawing board for. It gives us the opportunity to not have to do a hurried table and we can finish addressing the issues there, have a discussion, prepare, prepare whatever uh, 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 items the, the voters told us to reconsider, and then we can do that, you know, if, if so if that happens in the beginning of April, we can do that in the beginning to middle of May, and then we still have time, if we still didn't get it right, to have another meeting before before June without having to get graded. So it's basically just to give us cushion. The business office has said that they are pretty confident that, that they could have our numbers together and, and, and ready uh, for us by then. Um, right, Tara? Yeah. <laughs> So, so uh, we think we, 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 we think it, it'd be closer. We also had a lot of people that wanted to see it move to town meeting day. Yeah. We wanted to kind of get closer to that and see how our numbers were before we moved we moved it, it all the way there. For a while, when Stockbridge had it on town meeting day, we sometimes didn't have the clearest reports back then. Uh, for a very selfish reason, uh, I'm against this because. I won't be able to vote on the school budget if you have it then. And I think that there are, I don't know how many people in town go south, but a lot of us come back later on and are pretty easy to vote. I already missed town meeting and I like being able to vote on the school budget. If, if you were going to move it, I think you should move it. I've always been, I, I always thought that town meeting would get more participation if you did that, but that, that Clearly, it's not happened over the years. But now you're trying to get a couple. Um, and, and, but but you, you got weather considerations the earlier you move it, and you have and you basically take out quite a few people that go south in the winter time from being able to participate. And I'm one of them, so I'm going to go no more. <laughs> Very good point, Cheryl. Thank you. Then as a matter of fact, I would like to uh, amend that article to the first two in May. And I'll give an explanation, I won't be very long, is the fact that those of us that are a little sick of Vermont winters will not be back by the first two of April. And we do love this process. Uh, and we would like to be involved in it the first two of May as an amendment. Second. Can we go and actually change it on here? I think we can. Okay, yes, you can.
So do we need to go in? Do we need to? No. Amendment, there is an amendment on the floor, and then the second one, we're discussing it now. Yeah. First Tuesday, right? Second Tuesday. Second Tuesday, right? First Tuesday. First Tuesday. First Tuesday. Second Tuesday. First Tuesday, amendment. First Tuesday. First Tuesday. First Tuesday. First Tuesday. First Tuesday. First Tuesday. First. Your amendment was first Tuesday in May, correct? Yes. Yes, it was. First Tuesday. You called May, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. first Tuesday in May. Can I call the vote on that? Well, there's no more discussion. <laughs> Bill. Um, I've attended a lot of these school meetings, and they're terrific because we talk about the most important thing as a community we do, and that's educate our children. And we're all results of most of us public education wherever we came from. You know, some of us are struggling, but uh, nothing's more important. And in my recollection, it's come to these meetings, we've never voted on our budget. But what we've done is we've heatedly debated various things. And one thing that frustrates, and we've heard it tonight, and we spent most of our time talking about understanding the numbers. Yeah. We also talked about some of the numbers weren't included. And that, to me, suggests that until we can get the process, the administrative, the budgeting process, really solid. Now, let's face it, this is directly the first time they've worked together, these two communities. So there's, uh, and there's changes all over the place, including our, our budget director. So my suggestion is that we focus not on worrying about the budget being turned down, and it might be turned down because the numbers aren't there, or the mud numbers are confusing, or they're absent. I suggest that we give this the school directors time to come up with a coherent, transparent budget, that that budget come together and is shared with us in a timely fashion, that we have time to have our public hearings, as Janie talked about, where we can go into the, the weeds about the line items. But that does not speak to me about moving the budget and the, this annual school meeting to April. I'm not even sure it speaks to uh, the first Tuesday in May. Uh, but it speaks to that we're still on this journey to come up with coherent a budget and program. We have not spent one, I don't know, maybe a minute talking about educational outcomes. We've talked about the inputs. Okay, we're talking about line items. Uh, what are the results of all those numbers? And that's one of the most difficult things we as a school committee and community, we figure out what are the outcomes of, of all this money that we're spending. And uh, that's a, a challenge that every school committee has throughout the state and probably in the country. But uh, short of that, I, I uh, urge that we don't rush to move the, the calendar. We're now first Tuesday, second Tuesday, April, May. Why don't we delegate that back to the school directors and, and let them uh, determine that. In the meantime, um, it's getting late. Let's, uh, I suggest that we vote this article, this amendment down the article down and, and adjourn. <laughs> 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 okay, we're getting well into your bedtime, Bill. Uh, yes. <laughs> Carol? I, I have a, a different strategy, Bill. I agree with you. But I think we should vote for the amendment and then vote the whole thing down. Don't just, don't vote the amendment down and then vote for the article. Point of, point vote for the amendment and yes. then vote. Point of order takes precedence over anything? Yes, no point of order, um, just, uh, uh, this is actually a question, I guess maybe not a point of order. Um, if the article is voted down, the date remains today. Yeah. The fourth Tuesday of May. Fourth yeah. Tuesday of May. Thank you, just, I wanna make sure everyone understood that. The article gets voted down. It's going to stay tonight. Fourth Tuesday. We have to move the amendment first. First, yeah. Yeah. Right. 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 Take care. I, I, I mean, I have to disagree that um, we, we haven't talked about outcomes here. It seems to me the discussions about you know funding um, have had to do with. Uh, I mean, we we had an SU assessment that was numbers. But we have talked about outcomes as in you know, grade level proficiency at the end of grade three. So it's, it's just, a, I mean, I, I disagree with that characterization, but this is just about the numbers and about uh, the process. And it it seems to me we have talked about outcomes. It seems to me Carl spent a good deal of time talking about 
outcomes as well in terms of, um, I mean, I mean that specific outcome of grade level, of grade level literacy, and by the end of the day, that's a specific outcome. But it seems to me we were being specific about educational stuff. Okay, so, I'm done. Any more discussion? Move the discussion seats. Motion to Bayden, sir. Second. Thank you. Motion to Bayden. I get ahead of myself sometimes. <laughs> hey, Dan, you got to pull me back in. Motion to Bayden, sir, can we move the question? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Opposed. Who's recording? I was just oh. looking at the question. The article that we're going to, the amendment we're going to vote on. That was just, that just closed the discussion. That was just closing the discussion. Oh, okay. yeah. More discussion than we will vote on the article. Okay. Amen. Yeah. I mean, that, well, that is it. Yeah. Yeah. So, can we read the article again? Yeah. Clearly, state what we're voting for, please. Yes. Well, I'm trying to get them uh, <laughs> to come off the together. Uh, his, his, uh, who's recording? Uh, some of them. Okay. Can you repeat okay. what Mark? Thank you. I don't know what we're voting on. So I can read it. Yeah. Okay. So the, the, we're, the article. I'm taking notes up here. Oh, the, the article will read if the amendment, the amendment would read, shall the annual meeting of the Rochester Stockbridge Unified District be moved to the first Tuesday in May for all subsequent years beginning with the 2020 meeting? Okay. So if you vote yes, you want the information and, and the. And the consequence of a no vote would be what? It would go back to the original article, which is first Tuesday in April, which then we have to vote on. See what I mean? We have to vote on the amendment first. We have to vote on the amendment first. So we want to keep and, it as and, it is. And depend on your outcome of the amendment. So you go back to the original. So the the amendment you accept the amendment, that's it. First Tuesday in May is what we're voting on right now. Yes. yes or no? Yes. Uh, oh, gee. Point of order. My understanding would be, maybe I'm wrong, but uh, is that the first thing you do is move to substitute for the original article. Right. Well, then there has to be another vote on what you've got. Correct. So yeah. my strategy, as somebody that would like it to you stay the way it is, is going to be to vote for Mars Amendment first, and then vote the article down so it stays that way. If you vote down Marv's, Marv's amendment, it's better than the original article, in my opinion. So I'm going to vote for it. And then, when you ask us, now we have the article as amended, are you going to vote for that? And I'm going to vote no. That's my strategy. So you can vote for the amendment. <laughs>
The second Tuesday of May.
wish to vote no, raise your right hand. <laughs> the eyes have it. Oh. <laughs> so, first Tuesday in May of 2020. Article number nine, to transact any other business which may legally come before those meetings. Uh, yes, with uh, consolidation process with education, we have increased transportation overall. I'd like to know what our vision is to get away from fossil fuels in that transportation process and have a plan. Has this been seriously taken up by our board? The board has, uh, beyond, uh, beyond uh, discussing um, the uh, equipment that our uh, uh, contractor, Butler Bus Services, has, and in terms of uh, you know wanting to make sure that they, that we, when we uh, uh, had the conversation about renewing their contract uh, last year, the, the, the closest thing we came to, to, to your point, uh, Mason, was that we we discussed that you know was Butler right sizing our buses? Were they sending a big, you know, the, the, the full length uh, 50 some 60 passenger kid bus? You know, up to get five kids, and you know, are they giving us the the, the, the best equipment for for our uh, for our load? So beyond beyond, like I said, making sure that we're right sizing the, the transportation, there was not a discussion of whether or not they're running hybrids or uh, uh, you know natural gas buses or uh, electric or anything like that. No, I'm sure it'll come up as uh, as uh, uh, a there becomes more. Uh, uh, school buses that have those options and B as they start you know they're required by contract to keep our, our fleet uh, within a certain number of years and miles. Is it just years or is it miles and years? So as that equipment comes up I'm sure we're gonna be encouraging them to, to, to do that but it's not it's not a specification of the contract. So with uh, with two communities we have a voice to speak of the urgency that we like to move forward with, with that. Uh, on a state level with contracts, it's a large buying group when we per, uh, work this out with, uh, what, New Hampshire bus companies? I mean, the volume of buses, is that correct, Bruce? It's a Vermont company. So, but we're, we All are contracting buses. with them. Yes. And as a consumer body, we want to move forward away from fossil fuels they will because they're in the business of making money. That's how this process works. But we have to speak up for the difference. We, it's not us waiting any longer. Because for me, paying all this tax money, I want to create a future for the kids. And that means education needs to reflect reality now on the ground. So I think we need to speak up as a collective body of people saying, if you want our contract, you better get on it and give us a plan. If, if this, this, if maybe this needs to come up at next year's meeting to present to us a process that we can move forward with that. Thank you, Mason. I think the, the, the board has uh, understood uh, what you're asking for. And anything else that needs to be brought before this board at this time? Wow. Um, I'd like to move to adjourn. I have one thing that we, we kind of skipped past. A round of applause for the mature woman who's giving up three years. <laughs> and for the noble thespian who's giving up two.